Executive Session of the Wayne Good evening, everyone. Executive Session of the Wayne Board of Education Public Work Session of November 2nd, 2023 was convened in the conference room of the Wayne Board of Education, 50 Dallas Drive, Wayne, New Jersey. Statement of compliance setting forth date, time, and location was read in accordance with the requirements of the Open Public Meetings Act. Roll call was taken. The meeting was recessed and is now being convened. Ask everyone to please stand for flag salute, followed by a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. So I know there's a number of committee meetings that were held this evening, and um, in order to avoid duplication, I'm going to keep my report fairly brief, but I would like to talk to um, the board and also um, just let the community know there's some really exciting things that um, you can find online about Wayne. Okay? And so one of the things is if you Google top places to live in New Jersey, you'll find a travel and leisure article. And the travel and leisure article basically um, identifies the top 10 communities to live in Wayne. So it says, so to narrow down your search for the best place to live in New Jersey, you reached out to experienced local real estate experts. So it's the real estate experts who identified the hottest real estate markets in New Jersey, okay? And so if you roll along and start with Jersey City, work your way down, but in the state of New Jersey, Wayne is listed in this article as the number seven hottest real estate market in New Jersey. And the reason I bring that up here is it is um, this town of Passaic County has a very high ranking school system, which is really nice to see. And that's the basis for the ranking, um, Wayne at number seven. So that is really assurance for the Board of Ed and the community. The school system remains an anchor for, for the community. So that's really exciting news. Um, what I'd like to do is ask Mrs. Reichman if she could take a minute to provide the board with an update about our parent teacher program that we presented in the prior meeting. So if you could just um, maybe tell the board a little bit about where that's headed and um, some of the positive things we've heard back already. Sure. Um, at, our, at our last meeting, we had a presentation from Montclair State University to talk about this partnership with the Wayne Schools, the U.S. Department of Labor, and Montclair State University. And, um, as being uh, Montclair, the first institution of higher education in the state to have a teacher registered apprenticeship program, and Wayne to be the first district <laughs> to partner with them. We're, we're so excited. We put out a survey to our power professionals and our substitutes to just see what the interest is. Today, I was notified that there were 58 people who have responded to the survey, expressing interest. 43 of those individuals already have a bachelor's degree and would be eligible to go right into um, the alternate group program and get a certificate of um, eligibility. 43. Wow. And then we had 14 who have an associate or close to it. Um, so tomorrow I will be sharing out information of, with these individuals um, about their participation in the Montclair State information session where they'll get all the details. Um, so it's looking, um, we're very optimistic <laughs> that we will get lots of great and highly qualified teachers out of this partnership. So um, what I'd like to do is just talk about some news from around the district. First of all, um, Jet Center Connor McGovern posted the wrap-up of his ABLE All-Inclusive PE program, which provides a physical education experience for special needs students and their peers. The event was held at the Jets training facility. 40 of our students were able to attend. Um, Wayne and Roxbury physical education teachers, along with the support of um, Connor McGovern and his teammates, worked with students in a variety of activities based on the ABLE program. At the event, McGovern also announced that four lucky students who attended will be attending the next Super Bowl this upcoming February. Those tickets are paid for by Connor McGovern and the Jets organization. So, a very exciting thing. I'll let you know if any of our students want to the Super Bowl tickets. Cool. Okay. The Department of Education notified us that our grant application for high impact tutoring was approved and we will receive $460,000 in funding to support tutoring programs for our students. Um, as we described before, the allocated funds will be used for district staff support and to secure tutoring services off campus. 
So you'll find a related action item on tonight's agenda for the procurement of outside tutoring services. The subject to action authorizes the business office to utilize a competitive contracting process for the selection of a vendor. Staff will be working on the request for bid documents in the next few days, and when finalized, we'll go out and advertise. I'd also like to just take a moment to talk about one of the resolutions, Public Works Session 09, item 09. And this is a significant withdrawal from our capital reserve amount in the amount of $4.355 million. This is a very important step for the Board of Ed to continue to prepare Preakness School for an eventual transition to a fully operational elementary school. In this case, the funding will be used for work that's essential to maintaining the structural integrity of this 100-year-old building and involves window replacement, lintel repair, pointing, and roof replacement. The work is in addition to the planned refurbishment and restoration of the existing interior instructional spaces on the top floor. So this paves the way for that part of the building to be nearly complete and we'll be able to accept students and operate as a pre-K through five school. So that's exciting and we're on our way to be prepared for whatever the future holds. Um, as far as the business office goes, they're preparing for the on-site visit from our auditing team as they continue to prepare the district's annual audit. The external auditors have been reviewing information in their offices and plan to visit the district this week, start, or, I'm sorry, starting on November 13th. Also, um, some exciting things in our, our next newsletter. So there's a number of really great articles about our students and staff. Um, first of all, one of the articles is about Wayne Hills environmental science teachers, Mr. Martino and Ms. Malik's class, the fostering northern diamondback terrapins, which are on the decline in the state of New Jersey. <coughs> Um, they will be fostered in the classroom until June, and then once June rolls around, they'll be brought back to the Jersey Shore, where they hope they will live a long life. So it's a very nice article about some of the things our students are doing. Also, on Sunday, October 29th, the Wayne Valley High School Marching Band Turtles, led by senior drum major Andrew Slavin and junior drum major Zoe Jerkin, traveled to the College of New Jersey and won the Class A State Championship. So Wayne Valley finished in first place out of the 11 bands that were competing. They also won Best Overall Music and Best Visual. So finally, my HIV report, I'm reporting the following data related to harassment, intimidation, and bullying incidents in the Wayne Township School District. There have been 11 incidents of HIV that have been investigated since my last report. Six of those cases were deemed to be actual cases of HIV. That concludes my report. Mr. Mock, uh, revisions to the agenda. Yes, we have a few tonight uh, under T, Emergent Human Resources. Uh, we'll add, uh, actually, revised to number two, approval of leave requests. That's revised number two, ID number 9958, George Washington Middle School, start date of sick bank from October 17, 2023 to October 13, 2023. Revised number 13, ID number 3585. Uh, SCMC start date of sick bank from 11 2023 to 10 27 We're adding number 16 again to emerging human resources. Number 16, approval of termination for good cause. Um, that is going to read resolve that the Board of Education upon the recommendation of the superintendent approves the following termination for good cause. ID number six uh, four six. Excuse me, ID number 4860, driver transportation, PC number 71 06 18DRY. That's from account number 11 triple zero seven zero one six one dash five one dash zero zero seven. Salary of $33,895. Effective date December 1, 2023. Also adding number 17, approval of administrative leave. That action reads resolve the Board of Education upon a recommendation of the superintendent approves the following administrative leave. Staff number ID 4860, driver transportation, PC number 71-06-18 backslash DRY. Account number 11-00270-161-51-007. Uh, date of paid leave is November 2. 2023 through uh, November 30th, 2023, and that's administrative type. We're also adding number 18, approval of the second medical option, of excuse me, opinion. That uh, reads as follows, resolve that the Board of Education, upon the recommendation of the superintendent, 
hereby approves Dr. Anthony DeMarco to perform a neurological psychiatric, uh, psychiatric examination of employee ID number 2235 at Board of Education expense. And the written report detailing the result of such examination is to be provided confidentiality to the board within uh, 30 days of this date, November 2, 2023. Add number 19, approval termination of job abandonment. Um, that will read as, as follows. Resolve that the Board of Education, upon the recommendation of the superintendent, approve the following termination of job uh, for job abandonment. Staff ID number 9100, custodian RC. PC number 50-01-44 slash CBY. That's from account number 11 00262 100-50-006. Salary is 58,820. Effective date is November 2nd, 2023. Um, under B, Emergent School Resource um, Finance, we'll add number four, approval of carryover amendment. And that action reads, whereas the Board of Education, upon the recommendation of the superintendent, accepted the federal grant uh, in the amount specified below and approved carryover amendments for funds received in 2022-2023 for the 2023-2024 grant budget as follows. And that amendment is a carryover for IDA Part B <coughs> Basic, which is non-public allocation, and that amount is for $7,002. That concludes the revisions to the agenda. Thank you. This portion of the meeting is open to citizens for comments on agenda items only. Residents are asked to state their name, address, and subject matter. Comments may be limited to three minutes per person. Members of the public are discouraged from speaking negatively about an employee or a student. The board bears no responsibility for comments made by the public. Comments regarding employees or students cannot be legally responded to by the board. Other comments may be responded to tonight or at a subsequent meeting. Second. Anyone from the public on agenda items? The finance committee met yesterday, November 1st at 5.32. Uh, it was attended by Mr. Padlack and myself and administrators, uh, Mr. Moffitt and Mrs. Leidig. Uh, there were no change to the October 3rd, 2023 minutes, so we approved those. Uh, there were no questions from the board members on the agenda items, so we went through the financial reports for September 2023. Notable on the contracts, uh, Zebra Pay will start January 1st. Um, in order not to mess up with the, the 1099s. Um, I went through the transportation agreements. Um, as Dr. Sobek mentioned, uh, the capital reserve withdrawal for Preakness School, and there was a uh, $200,000 um, uh, capital reserve withdrawal for uh, New Paul. Well, uh, we're approving, uh, we're looking to approve a, a $200,000 um, withdrawal for uh, the new bus depot planning costs. Uh, uh, emergent checks, uh, emergent comprehensive maintenance plan uh, is what we went through. Also, as Dr. Tolek mentioned, uh, we talked about the competitive contracting with the high impact tutoring. Um, we discussed uh, this new or revised policy regulation review for uh, uh, policy number 8500. Uh, where 8540 and 8550 will be abolished. Those are regarding food service and school nutrition programs and uh, meal charges for food service bills. We discussed um, the RFP for um, the realtor. Uh, there will be an RFP for the uh, Shinman property. Um, the request for a proposal will be accepted until November 15th at 11 a.m. Uh, it can also be accepted electronically. Um, as far as the, the rod grants, there was uh, nothing new there, uh, nothing new on the SDA um, Early Childhood Center. Um, for the referendum updates, um, they received the binder. Um, uh, and basically, they are looking um, 
through and uh, feedback is requested now. So, um, so they're definitely looking at those now. Uh, we previously uh, mentioned the uh, long range plan. Uh, we will also be adding, uh, well, we'll be looking to add a Roth 403B option for uh, the district employees. Uh, we received uh, $40,000 from Special Olympics for the Unified Sports, which was a little less than, than years prior. Uh, we talked about um, the provision that was just mentioned for the IBEA grants. Um, we also discussed um, that the auditors will be coming in November 13, just as uh, Dr. Sobek also mentioned. And uh, the business office is, is moving in. Uh, we re reviewed the timeline, timeline for that. And um, yeah, so uh, yeah, we, we want to uh, move forward uh, approving the, the comprehensive maintenance plan, as I mentioned earlier. That needs to be uh, filed by November 15th uh, into the county office. That was it. Yeah, just be a short one. The education committee met tonight. Uh, present were Mrs. Muntik, Mrs. Rigoloso, Mrs. Reichman, and myself. We approved the October uh, Education Committee minutes. Uh, we reviewed three policies and regulations for renewal, and the big one was the uh, updates to the chemistry curriculum, which are designed to realign better with AP testing, so the more difficult components of the curriculum can have more time working on it before uh, the AP day. And our APs were always a month behind because most start in August around the country, so they jump out the gates a month behind to begin with. So making these kind of changes really does help out with the AP testing. And that was our meeting. Any other committees? I'll have a move for the agenda. I'll move. Second, Mr. Powell, Mr. Nicholas. Any discussion on the agenda? Roll call. Oh, I'm sorry. I've got a question. Um, on the unified sports, we started this three years ago, maybe. We started off with a grant from the Special Olympics for 125000 The following year, we were down to 75000 because they figured our initial costs were covered, and now it was just a matter of maintenance. And now we're down to forty. So my concern is um, this is going to now have to come out of the general fund. And I just want to put it out there to the public that this is something that we'd be happy to take well, from the community on to continue these wonderful sports programs, sponsorships, um, however you want to make a donation uh, to this cause. I think it would be a worthwhile endeavor for our students because, uh, again, you know, this was started through 100% grant money and that's drying up pretty quickly, and it may even come to zero. So uh, that's a very important population and a great program, and I hate to see it disappear. Any other comments? So yeah. that's a feasible item, I assume, we have to, have to have sponsorships in this program. It's allowable for the whole policy. Yeah, donations are much appreciated. Always welcome. Ferris. <laughs> Ferris, yes. Pay attention. <laughs> Sponsorships <laughs> requested. Thank you. citizens for comment on any topic. Residents are asked to state their name, address, and subject matter. Comments may be limited to five minutes per person. <coughs> Members of the public are discouraged from speaking negatively, negatively about an employee or a student. Board bears no responsibility for comments made by the public. Comments made regarding employees or students cannot be legally responded to by the board. Other comments may be responded to tonight at a subsequent meeting of the visit. Do I have a move? I'll move. Second, Mr. Towns. Good evening. Good evening. I am uh, Kevin Wardour. I live on 15 Andover Drive. I have a son in Lafayette. I am uh, 
speaking today about what's happening in the world and how our schools can help. Since my child has been attending school in Wayne, I've seen many examples of this board being extremely reactionary to serious circumstances involving the welfare of our children. Bullying, drop scores, so many things that we wait to see what happens. Today I'm begging the board to be proactive in stepping up against hate speech. Now there's a clear difference between free speech and hate speech. And also there's a difference in how people of different ethnicities, cultures, and political affiliations interpret what is being written, displayed, and said in our schools. But today I speak to you as a Jewish parent who's watching the rise of anti-Semitism and hate speech in our grade schools, our high schools, our universities, places that we used to consider safe for our children. We cannot wait to react to anti-Semitism or hate speech of any kind towards any group. Both the Wayne Council clergy and myself, representing over 250 members of the Jewish Parents of Wayne, have asked the superintendent to simply change blocking political image in the school's profile pictures. Right now, the school-owned profile pictures are allowed to have any picture, but these profiles do not fall under free speech. These profiles are owned by the school. You can easily make the profile pictures a list of approved pictures that children can choose from, or you can just remove the pictures. This is one small change that would harm no one and would show everyone that the board is the Board of Education is taking the first of hopefully many proactive steps in protecting our children. You all see what is going on in the world today. We are afraid. Stop waiting to see what happens and please start implementing changes for the safety of our kids. Thank you. Thank you. Rabbi Mayor Gurkha with the Chabad Center, 194 Hats Road here in Wayne. Um, I stand to rise here as a uh, representative, as a uh, rabbi here in the community for the Jewish community. And as um, was just mentioned, some people say hate speech, some people say free speech, and whatever the legal uh, ramifications of that is, I have one sentence for you. I don't care. If somebody walked into school with an image of uh, KKK or a Confederate flag even, probably, that wouldn't last more than 24 hours. If there are students, we see what's going on in college campuses now, and you can call that anti-Zionism from today to tomorrow, it is clear, unabashed, unveiled anti-Semitism. That's what it is. And colleges trickle up from the feeders, those are the high schools, those are the middle schools. That's where it all trickles up from. If we do not show our children what anti-Semitism is, and we say there is free speech, you know what? Why don't we just tell them, I don't care? Because you can be anti-Semitic in the United States. That is protected. You can be anti-black in the United States. That's also protected. You could be anti-Sikh. You could be anti-Islam. You could be anti-whatever you want. That's all protected. But guess what? The public will shun you. The public will not stand for it. You're allowed to be free however you like. But it doesn't mean that the public has to agree with you. And the administration and the teachers and the principals should say anti-Semitism is absolutely unacceptable at any moment on any platform that has to do with school that means walking into school with it that means on a on a school form with it digitally or on hard paper whatever it is anti-semitism is absolutely banned in public schools and we can just say one thing we don't care what you think otherwise anti-semitism is not allowed in our schools Anyone else from the public wishing to speak? Mr. President, see if they approach. Session tab to do that. Any old business? New business? Board member comments? Yeah. Okay. 
go first. And so for our, our first speaker, um, if you'll notice on the executive session, the board did have a discussion about the um, acceptable use policy, technology in the district. And so you'll be moving ahead with an analysis of how we can institute some changes that will make sure that our students are not exposed to anything unexpectedly where there are generic images and things like that. So it's something that we'll be working on it is something that the board um, is willing to move ahead with. That is wonderful news. Thank you. Do you have timing on that? I don't know if I'm going to ask questions. <laughs> so I, I, I'll let you go. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll give you a minute for you to go. OK. <coughs> so there's a procedure for changing board policy. So it's not just something I can do and say change will happen immediately. Right? It is something we have to work toward. So there is a proposed policy that will be developed. There is a policy that will be reviewed for our next meeting. And the following meeting, there would be a group to ask you to vote something. Okay. So next two, within the next two meetings, the policy we're talking will be. talking too much, though. I'm just afraid well, of what will happen yeah, in this We're country. talking one month. Okay. 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 We're talking one month. Can somebody way I understand you? You can speak Dr. Tell back yeah, afterwards. Okay. okay. I'm new to this. That's so. okay. <laughs> so it's not back and forth, but I understand you. your concern. Okay. So there is. There's an effort in the direction we're seeking. Um, and the other, the other um, speaker, I'd like Mr. Gebert, if you could just respond to the sure. issue. Um, sure. We certainly hear the, the concern that people state. And from a legal perspective, there is free speech. Uh, there is also uh, substantial disruption. We have had instances where we've had comments where the district has taken action and had things taken down that we thought crossed over the line from free speech to something that we thought was creating a disruption because of uh, anti-comments, basically. Um, as the superintendent indicated, we, are, we did discuss tonight and we are moving forward with an analysis to see if we can revise the policy to bring it within uh, some of the goals that people are seeking at this point, and we are actively working on that. It seems like some of you would like to speak, so at the end of the meeting, I'll be happy to talk to you if you have other questions about this, okay? This is good, yeah. It's a tough issue, and I know people uh, <laughs> on both sides of it and there's a lot of emotions and I think that as a board we have to send a very clear message that hate is not allowed in our schools. We have a no place for hate program. I think we need to reinforce it at every level from elementary to high school because we see little pockets but I think if we don't put a lid on it now it'll only get worse because we're not really doing enough about it. Uh, we're worried about free speech. Or, uh, these things, it'll be too little too late, as Ms. Power mentioned. Um, so, yeah, I mean, to his credit, Mr. Prasakos wanted to put out a resolution. He was told no. I think the board should have put out a resolution. That's my opinion. We have to take advice of counsel. I don't always agree with counsel, but, you know, I, I don't want to hide behind the First Amendment on these types of things either. Uh, unfortunately, I'm one person speaking for myself. I can't force the board's hand, and I can't force the administration's hand. But um, yeah, anti-hate, anti-religion, anti-anybody. Uh, we're human beings. We're all bleeding the same blood. I don't want to see it in our schools, and I think a lot of people are feeling it, and we should definitely be more proactive in teaching our students that hate will not be tolerated. Now, as far as that policy goes, I'm going to ask the administration to fast track it the best they can. Thank you. And hopefully, we can have it by the December meeting if it legally all falls into place. I, I can't promise you anything, but I, I think we're going to that's our goal because I think it is, as you said, it's something that's got to be addressed now. And I think even besides what you're saying, what was in the news in the news today in Central Jersey 
how AI is being now used <coughs> to manipulate, which is another whole issue in itself and should not detract from this issue at all. Um, we have had some situations in our, in our buildings, very few, and they've been immediately addressed by administration. I can assure you of that. As soon as it was brought to their attention, as soon as it was brought to the principal's attention, it was taken care of, and they will remain vigilant on this. Anyone else? Anyone else? Motion to adjourn. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.